several weeks now, we've been talking about electrical systems on cars. And we've talked a lot about batteries and battery maintenance and so on. Well, the whole purpose of the battery, number one, is to get the car started. And that means that we have to have a circuit such as we see over here. We have a battery, has a cable that goes out possibly to a relay or a solenoid. We'll explain the difference in a minute. And then down to the starter motor, through the starter motor and to ground. Well, first thing we have to realize is how a starter motor works. And that is, if we look at this starter motor, we have teeth in here. Those teeth are designed so that they match the flywheel on the back of the engine. And when we get the starter motor spinning, those teeth spin the big flywheel on the back of the engine and it starts the engine. Now, we have to look at these things. This is the way starters used to be. This is the way starters are today. You look at the difference in the size of them. It's an amazing difference. The reason for that is that most of these modern starters, what they have in them is permanent magnets. They're permanent magnet motors. And in these old ones, they have these big coils inside this heavy body. That's what this screw holds in here. They were uh, either wire or bar wound coils and they take up a lot of space and they uh, transmit power into the body so you had to have this big massive body and so on in order to get the power to start the engine. Well, with permanent magnets, uh, the power is much more readily available. We cut down on the size, up the price. This old dude here was, oh, the last count I guess was about $69. Some of these are 300 to 900 bucks, uh, but they rarely wear out. Okay, so this drive gear, which is called a starter drive, uh, it has to come into contact with the flywheel. So right now it's relaxed, it's back into the starter. We need to pull that out somehow. And in some starters we do it with this right here. This is a starter solenoid. Now a starter solenoid does two things. It not only moves this gear into mesh with the flywheel, but it completes an electrical circuit. Now the way that works is that this is a giant electromagnet. Well, giant as far as automobiles are concerned. And there's a plunger in there. That plunger attaches to a shaft that goes down through here. And when we apply power to this solenoid, the plunger moves back, pulls this uh, lever back, which flings this gear out toward the flywheel. All right, so now we've got that accomplished. Now we need to put power into this starter motor to make it turn. So in the back half of this solenoid, there's an electrical contact that when this plunger moves back, it connects this terminal up here, which is connected to the positive battery terminal uh, by means of a cable, connects this one to this lower one, which puts power right straight into the, uh, the starter motor. So that's the most typical way. Probably 95% uh, of all cars use that. Uh, the only ones that don't use a solenoid these days, uh, some older cars don't use it and so on. Well, if we had an older car that didn't use a solenoid, and first let's define solenoid. Solen solenoid performs two functions. It performs mechanical to engage the starter drive and electrical to complete the, uh, the electrical circuit into the starter. Well, the other type used a uh, spiral that was cut into the shaft of this starter and it had matching spirals inside the drive. So what had to happen was you had to make the starter turn and because those spirals were cut in such a manner, it would spin that gear out into the flywheel. 
So in that case, we didn't have a solenoid because we didn't need a solenoid. We use a magnetic switch or relay such as we see here. Now this relay, you apply a current to it from the ignition key. It closes the contact between this and this and sends power down to the starter. The starter starts to spin and it throws that drive gear into mesh with the flywheel. So that's the way we get the electricity to the starter motor and how we get the starter motor to engage the flywheel on the back of the engine. Now a couple of things you have to be aware of here. One of the old tricks to get one of these going, one of these old fashioned ones like this with the bar wound uh, field coils in it. Well, one of the things you could do is you could get under the car with a hammer and go bam. And lots of times they would start because there'd be a short between some of this metal inside and you'd knock it loose and so on. No big deal. But over here on the uh, permanent magnet starter, don't go beating on that sucker because permanent magnets can break. And if you wang this thing, you may break one of those uh, magnets. Now, what might have been a minor problem has all has become a major problem and you have to buy a new starter and you could be looking at a lot of money to do that. So that's something that you don't do. All right, now, as we've seen this, uh, uh, this layout here, we start at the battery and uh, we get this power down to the starter and of course all of this goes to ground and completes the circuit. Next time, what we're going to talk about is one of the tests that most techs don't fully understand. And that is a voltage drop test. And it is incredibly important when you're trying to test a problem with a starting system. So that's coming up next time on Boss's Garage. And if you have a question, a comment, which is plain want a lot of great information, check us out at goss-garage.com.